Hi there. Well, I am really excited today to share with you quite a rare and unusual engine. One that you don't see very often. I've never actually seen one in the flesh, held one. And in fact, I've never seen one running. And I don't think they're actually manufactured for very long. Even though they're quite a good engine, they weren't a very popular engine. In front of me, I have the DC Tornado. Now, this is a twin cylinder glow engine. It's a boxer, so they're both cylinders fire together, so they come out and back in together. Now, I, it's just under five cc. I think it's about 4.85 or something like that. Now, this was given to me, it was donated to me and the channel by a really great guy, Jeff. He gave me a, a number of engines that are all really, really nice engines. Some need a little bit of work. Some, like this, can go st straight in the test stand. A really kind gesture, and Jeff, I'm really, really grateful. Thank you. Now, I think we ought to take a quick, closer look at this before we get it in the test stand. I am really interested to see how this runs. Right, so here's this gorgeous engine and as I said you can see the the twin cylinders it's radially mounted so you just bolt that straight onto the firewall we've got this lovely long uh, spinner nut here and we've got twin exhausts coming out uh, the bottom now the thing that strikes me about this is it is such a complicated casting it really is and we've even got the uh, the Venturi cast into it as well just look at that, a real, piece of, uh, a real piece of engineering. Now I believe they had quite a few issues when they were developing this and, and possibly even to the point that it delayed uh, it going onto the market. Adrian Duncan's done a really good article about these engines, well worth a read. I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the description below uh, this video. Now we've got embossed on the crankcase here, DC Limited, and what is interesting is it's got made in England, we just see on there. Now, my understanding is that when these were uh, came onto the market in 1960, they were actually made in the Isle of Man. And I've got an instruction booklet for this very engine that says the Isle of Man, and uh, the Isle of Man isn't part of England, so that's quite interesting. I'm not, I'm not sure of the politics behind that and uh, anyway so a great looking engine it feels a little bit stiff but it does turn over nicely with great compression not sure if this has uh, been run in uh, or had a great deal of running so we'll probably take it quite steady to start with but just look at that what a what an absolutely gorgeous engine and it's dripping oil all over the place because I've given it a really good oil and, uh, and turned it over, ready for getting into the test stand. Now, as I said, Jeff also gave me uh, a, a price list from the time and uh, an instruction leaflet. And I absolutely love these leaflets because it's, you don't necessarily need them, but it's just really interesting to read. And getting back to that question of made in England, now you can see here this advert that appeared in Aero Modeler in I think it's March uh, 1960 and you can see on that that it says the Isle of Man. Now I understand these engines were only around for a maximum of two years because they were very expensive, they didn't have a throttle and they were a little bit heavy for a 5cc engine and so they weren't really adopted by the aero modeling community even though they are supposed to be lovely running engines so anyway so only one way to find that out let's get it in the test stand and see how it runs right well i've got this gorgeous engine clamped in the test stand and i'm dead excited to see how it runs to start off with i've got this 11 by 6 cavan prop that's what's recommended for running it in, so we'll take it nice and steady because I don't know how much run time this engine has got, but it certainly doesn't seem as if it's had a lot. So anyway, right, 
tacker ready and uh, got fuel coming through so twin glow plugs Um, sounding like it wants to go. It's just not. Don't know whether I leaned it out a little bit too much. It's got quite hot, <laughs> but still nice and free. Right. Well, this has cooled down now. You can just feel a slight bit of residual warmth in them uh, above ambient, but uh, yeah, certainly cooled down. They, they did get quite hot on that last run. Uh, but I think I've probably leaned it out. I don't think for a second it seized or anything like that with the heat. But just need to be careful with this and make sure it doesn't get too hot. I've opened the needle valve a little bit more, so we'll see. Now that was strange, I got the feeling that one of the cylinders stopped working and it was just running on one cylinder. So I'm going to take the plugs out and just check the plugs are still okay. And actually I've put two new OS8s in so we'll see how, uh, how it goes with these.
let that cool down. <laughs> well, I think the, the one plug just kept dropping out because it was probably too rich. Once I'd got the glow drivers in, I could really lean it out and it sounded and ran so much better. But I still think it was struggling with that big prop because this is only a 5cc engine. So I've put on a 10x6 and uh, we'll see how this runs now with this. And uh, right, yeah, let's get it fired up then. Richen it up a little bit. There we go. Let's check it. Oh, I haven't turned the fuel on. <laughs> that would help, wouldn't it? I ran out of fuel. Oh dear. What a rookie error. Ran out of fuel. But that did run a lot better. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> I'm going to let that cool down a bit. But that ran so much better with that prop. Still hunting a little bit. I think there was a few bubbles coming through and it probably wanted leaning just that little bit more. But um, I don't want to push it too much with this uh, slightly smaller prop but it was certainly happier with it. <laughs> 